Queen Semiramis understood the plots of the priesthood, their revisionist history, how they invented sins and laid them at the charge of her Titan parents' generation. For a century, the Titanesses and their giantess daughters were oppressed by the priests, used by them for filling their coffers. All the while, the priests both secretly and openly defied the goddess as they raised to prominence the seven of the old world, the Anunnaki kings who drew their power from the deep. The world became filled with growing kingdoms that were merely colonies before. Relics from the old world of the Titans were found half buried in the ground, monuments and structures of imposing size and magnificence. The Titan culture of the Guardians, called Shumer, dissipated as their cities were filled with the people of Akkad as Babylonia emerged dominant in Assyria, her sister. To the east of Shushan and Elam, the half-giant chieftain Kudor Lagomar ruled a powerful kingdom and made Babylon his enemy, though his envoy showered gifts of great wealth and exotic before the feet of Queen Semiramis. This did not go unnoticed. Not far at Urartu, a relic of great magic was found from the old world, and as the Amuru filled the land, it was learned that giants had taken refuge in Bashan and Argob in the beautiful valley of Rapha. For as the kingdoms of men spread abroad, the far west was not so far at all. Semiramis was feared by the priesthood. They claimed in secret that she had bewitched their king, but in truth they despised her wisdom and cunning, for she understood their plans and hatched intrigues of her own to thwart their every attempt. Her network of spies, agents, and assassins kept the priests honest for a time until they learned of her communications with the banished. The titans and giants banished to the far west were thriving and had founded kingdoms of their own. They had found more of their kin who survived the world before, and Queen Semiramis was in secret communications with her kin. Rumors of titans and giants living in the far western isles persisted and reports from Argos and Joppa confirmed that some of the giants had taken to piracy on the high seas, called the Fomori, in massive arcs. Others reported that giants were ruling in Magan in the far south, and their subjects were called the Comitians and the whisperers of the priests, they spread it far and wide, that the tales of the world before were true, that the moon had once filled the entire sky, but the sins of the goddess had caused a great flood. The proof was that the moon was so tiny today, and they whispered that the servants of the goddess were again playing with Anunnaki magics. By this and other untrue rumors did the priests groom the people. The people adored the goddess and resisted the seven for a while, which angered the priests. The temples raised militias and cavaliers, trained knights in defense of the priesthood, sworn to the seven. They employed spies who brought them intelligence gathered about the mysteries, the secret meetings of the giantesses still conducted in honor of the goddess. These spies brought knowledge of secret sciences and advanced objects from the world before that were still operating and used by the giantesses, ancient technologies that were given to them by their titan families. The priests now understood that the sorceries of the goddess had come from the Titan society and could be used by them if they were to capture these devices. The daughters of the Titanesses and the giantess, the half-bloods and their attendants were respected by the people as keepers of the traditions, healers, wise women, ladies of the loom. They were seen as the offspring of the gods, so tall and beautiful they seemed more than human. It was known that among themselves there were members calling themselves Sisters of the Serpent, or Ophion, 
which gave them the power to see both the past and the future. These women possessed objects of great power from the age of the Titans that allowed them to communicate with one another at great distances and to see far-off places and to know secret things. Some of these relics gave off strange lights that healed disease and injury. The Anunnaki worshippers at the temple sanctuaries of Nimrud, Kalne, Sippar, and Uruk, they met with the high priest of the great ziggurat at Babylon, and they shared their plan to subdue the servants of the goddess and steal their technology, which they labeled as sorcery and abominations of the fallen ones. The peace of the goddess would never enrich them like the fear programming of the Anunnaki, so the plan was executed and their whisperers were unleashed upon the people until all began to fear the devices of the goddess, servants as unholy. These women were accused of betraying the goddess and using Anunnaki sorceries against the people until the people demanded their imprisonment, enslavement, and some were even executed publicly. The priests briefed the king about these subversive activities and gave their guarantee that the matter would be handled with care if he gave his blessing. They made sure to explain that Queen Semiramis was unaware of these activities, and this assurance gave the king relief, but it was a lie. The priests knew that she was too influential, too powerful to defeat without instigating a full kingdom-wide revolt and bloodshed. Receiving permission the agents and soldiers of the temples acted quickly and stormed the sanctuaries of the goddess. They chained the attendants and put them to torture, knowing they would break and tell all the secrets of the giantesses and offspring of the titans. They arrested all the women who represented the goddess, and in the streets they pulled out vile and horrendous objects and tablet inscriptions that were forgeries that had been carefully prepared and told the people that these were the objects that were found in the chambers of these women. They confiscated the technologies of the giantesses and learned quickly how to use them for their own purposes in the temples. These were engineered and adapted for other uses, and the attendants, servants, and the giantesses themselves were forced to become sacral prostitutes in the invented mythological drama of the mother of all living, offering the first man a forbidden fruit. For centuries afterward, Girls were forced to stand in temple courts holding an apple until a man took her to a temple bedchamber. But this is not the end of the story for Queen Semiramis. She has yet a major role in mothering the mighty hunter, Amar Udaak, better known as Merodak in Akkad and Nimrod, as well as exacting her vengeance on the priests of Babylon. These priests were a class called the Edemu, and centuries later they would be run out of the temples and take up residence among the bandit lords to the southwest on the edges of the great desert. Their land would come to be called Edom. These people would live on to be the greatest haters of humanity throughout every generation, even unto the present day.